Hey guys, it's Messier82 and I am back with another video. It has been a few days since I've done a flyout video, so I hope you guys enjoyed the DCS video in the meantime. So basically, it turns out that um, I actually lost all of my voiceover recording because when I was trying to hit Control Z on Premiere, it hit Control Z on the file manager and then it just got lost through a skew of nonsense and bullcrap. So I have to re-record this whole thing even though I've already said all this to you already. I've had to re-record builds before, but somehow, even though that takes so much more time, it's way less annoying than having to re-record a voiceover. But I digress. Maybe if I had a script or something, it would be a little bit better, but I don't. Anyways, I also got actually, you know, while we're on that topic, I've got a new cover for my microphone. It's a little foam, uh, covering. I guess, and it just makes the noise a little bit better coming through, so hopefully my voice sounds a little bit better this time around. Anyways, enough about me, let's start talking about this video. Basically, my goal is to make a VTOL aircraft in flyout. A lot of people have asked me for a Harrier style aircraft, and this is my chance to actually make one. But there's bad news too. The bad news is that flyout doesn't actually have VTOL nozzles and it doesn't have any of the uh, control thrusters or ability to model control thrusters as they would work in real life. For example, in real life, let's take a Harrier, for example, a little bit of the bypass air flows through uh, valves that get activated by a control input into little control thrusters and that allows it to more or less control its position through a bunch of mini thrusters that are hooked up to the original engine. Now, this isn't in flyout yet, but it might be coming soon. I, I I probably shouldn't say it's coming soon, actually. Stone, please don't don't kill me. I didn't mean to accidentally mention something that might be in a future update. I don't know. But, you know, that's not the point. The point is it's going to be coming sometime in the future of flyout, most likely. So we can't really work with those VTOL control, those fine VTOL controls or any of that right now. What we could do if you were sane, reasonable, and logical human beings is make a tilt rotor. Because cyclics, collectives, variable pitch, all of that stuff is already modeled on a tilt rotor, it's very easy to make. Now, we aren't sane human beings, so instead we're coming up with this monstrosity. Basically, it works like this. You have three engines that can all rotate on a hinge axis, which will be assigned to a VTOL key of my choosing. But since there is no control nozzles like there would be on a traditional VTOL, like a Harrier or whatever, instead what I have to do is I have to... Basically, I have to use the actual engine throttle to control the aircraft's movement. For example, if I wanted to move the nose up, the two front engines would have to throttle up and the rear engine would have to throttle down. If I wanted to roll to the left or right, then let's say I want to roll to the left, the left engine would have to throttle down and the right engine would have to throttle up. Now, this works, but there are some pretty big problems with it. First of all, there is no yaw control. More on that later. But the second problem, and this is a problem that we're not really able to solve, is that there is a lot more spool time. And basically that means, you know, when you throttle up an engine, it doesn't just go to full throttle immediately, it takes a little bit of time to adjust. And that time ends up being an input lag. So let's say you start listing to the right really hard and you want to roll to the left, it's going to be a couple seconds before that actual left roll action will kick on. And if you're in, let's say, a very windy environment, for example, this is absolutely horrid for flight. So instead what I could do, and what I did do, is use control surface motors. That means technically, uh, to the front two motors, they're going to have three axes, no, not three axes of movement. They're going to have two control points. They're going to have the VTOL joint, and then they're going to have the control surface motor for the pitch command and for the yaw command. This solves two of our problems. Now, if we want to yaw to the left or right, we can make it so one engine goes back and one engine goes forwards, which generates a little bit of a spinning uh, feeling to the aircraft. And the other thing it solves is the spool time on the pitch command, because now we have a bit of a more instantaneous pitch command of moving the engines back and forth to adjust center of thrust. And that helps us pitch just a little bit quicker without having to wait for that spool time. 
Now, this also comes with a subset of problems though. Because the control surface motors are a little bit wobbly, the engines wobble around a lot and that makes a lot of uneven thrust. The second problem is that they have a lot of torque behind them. Obviously, the engine is a very large inertial mass on the aircraft. We're not just pivoting like a, a nozzle like a Harrier, we're literally pivoting the entire engine. We can't just open a valve and get, get different thrust and get control. We literally need to move the entire engine assembly to get this. So what that means when you apply Newton's third law is that when we move the engines, the aircraft moves as a secondary force. You know, just as I turn the engine, the engine turns me. And that means that we're going to have a lot of torque balances and instabilities in this aircraft as we're building it. I mean, then again, look at this design and tell me it's the pinnacle of stability. Long story short, there's going to be a lot of stability issues on this aircraft. So obviously that would present its own subset of problems. But enough about the actual absurd and just frankly kooky engineering behind this aircraft. Let's actually explain what I'm doing in the designer now. And you know what, maybe it's nice that I got to re-record this because I've I managed to get this segment done in a lot less time and a lot less explaining. So now I have more time to actually talk about the build. Let's get on with it. So basically at this point, I'm sure you guys have been able to figure out I am making a tri-engined VTOL aircraft. Something someone actually pointed out in the comments of my DCS video and I actually noticed from my DCS video is that a lot of my designs seem to lack rearward visibility and I tried to make that just a little bit better with this one. At least as good as it could be. And it, it was alright, it wasn't fantastic, but it was better than some of my previous designs. But anyways, yeah, it is a three-engine VTOL aircraft. And yes, I went for a twin boom design this time around. I know what you guys are thinking, oh my god, it's messier, he loves twin booms, blah blah blah, yada yada yada. Yes, I love twin booms, but this time I actually have an excuse to make one because I need room for that back engine to pivot. I mean, what else am I gonna do? Put the whole tailplane on top of the engine and have it pivot with it? That, that That's not gonna work. And we can't let any boundary layer get fed into my intake or anything. So, you know, we're gonna have to have that twin boom set up and I'm, I'm certainly not complaining. I think at one point we had canards, but we removed them because they can't uh, actuate properly due to the rotation of the engines. But um, in order to actually move the center of pressure far enough forwards to actually not be absurdly nose heavy, I needed to make it a reverse swept wing aircraft. But as a downside to that, that just makes it even more unstable because of course it makes it even more unstable. So what I ended up doing to actually solve this is I put in a very basic flight control system that would help me stabilize this horrendous design. And you know what, I think this is a fantastic design to come back to, because it's just something completely out of left field here. It's completely random, this really weird, unusual, nonsense VTOL design that isn't even the most efficient way to do VTOLs, but you know what, we're doing, we are doing VTOLs the hard way today. I should name my video that or something, who knows. I guess you'll see when this video comes out if that's what I actually called it, but. And you know what else? You know what else? This totally reminds me of like some 70s like, or like early 80s VTOL design where they're like, hey, aerospace designer, I'm asking you to test some engine vectoring VTOL systems, go. Here's some funding, and then you just snort a rail of coke and get to it. So you know what, just for that, I gave it like a, a 70s, 80s NASA um, paint livery scheme thing. I just gave it what I thought would make a good experimental livery, basically. Although, of course, you will not see the paint scheme in the video. A little bit later on, I do the interior, which is kind of nice. And, you know, I had those, like, really weird gun things in the booms, and I decided to completely remove them, because this is an experimental aircraft after all. It doesn't really feel like it should have those guns there. And also, it had, like, this really weird landing gear setup. It had the two really skinny, long landing gear that looked kind of funny in the booms, and then those, those were just for, like, yaw stability. And then I had the, or, sorry, roll stability. And then it had the one in the middle, it had the thick singular middle landing gear, and then it had a total of four landing gear. It had the two in the sides, the one in the middle, and the one in the front. Kind of reminiscent of a Harrier's landing gear, so you know what, it kind of made sense. I feel like if I set up this VTOL system a little bit differently, I probably could have done this whole engine setup better, but that's fine. It's fine, guy. No, it's not fine. I mean, you do get to see me change colors here, so at least there's that. I also added those really tiny little turbines in the sides of the tail 
to try and help me with a little bit of the yaw control, but they ended up being like completely useless. All they were really good for was just being a total waste of fuel. So there's that. And oh yeah, here it is. I, uh, I mentioned earlier, you guys actually get to see a little bit of interior building this video. How nice is that? So the interior ends up being pretty simple. All I do is I add a, I add a UFD, uh, HUD, the UFD is just like a radio or something, or I don't even know, maybe it's like an autopilot system, maybe it's more similar to an American UFD. But I add the UFD, I add the HUD, I add um, a basic six pack in a radio and a little like circuit panel thing to the right, or failure panel, I don't even know. And after that I add like a single MFD underneath, I'm assuming it's just a little screen, like data screen or whatever on the aircraft, I don't want it to have too many like data screens I guess if that makes any sense. I, I kind of want it to be a pretty simple functional cockpit that's just for you know flying it like a test pilot would because after all this is a test aircraft. But with all that radio and uh, all that out of the way excuse me I believe that's about all we had to do to this aircraft so we were ready for a test flight. I'll see you guys then. Alright, so once again this video... Oh, that's a little bit loud, let me turn that down. Once again this video, I'm just recording live, instead of doing a montage and just time-lapsing and talking over it. So let's hope it goes well. There's a decently strong crosswind, it's just enough to push me around here, but I don't think it'll be enough to prevent us from flying. It is not. Only problem about this thing, it is not very stable in any sense of the word. I am wrestling with this thing a lot, just to get the wrong fly. Let's start rotating the engines here. Yeah, there we go. Although it is pretty stable once it gets some air under its wings, but I should expect that. One of the larger, at least seemingly larger reasons for its instability is uh, the fact that the thrust vector just moves the entire engine pod. It literally moves the entire engine instead of just a nozzle, since I had to do that. And that... Hmm, how do I say this? That sort of, you know... It has a lot of inertia behind it, basically. And all that mass moving around on the front just sort of twerks your plane and shifts your plane around a lot, which isn't very productive. However, it works, so uh, good enough, I guess. It actually works pretty well. It definitely flies here. Let me actually do a quick... I was going to go land, but uh, it's a little bit too early for that. Let me do a quick speed test. Something that is nice about it, though, is that we do still get the thrust vectoring when we are flying straight, so we do have a little bit extra pitch authority. Which is pretty nice, I have to admit. Cockpit looking good. Oh, fly by wire doesn't have to be much though. Eh, so. that's alright. Alright. Maybe we shouldn't give it a top speed test then. Ah, oh, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. I can't say it's the fastest aircraft in the world, it's maybe... I'm not going to end up giving it a top speed because I've got some issues with the fly-by-wire, but it's about the same, uh, I don't know, it, feel, it, it feels like a Harrier in a lot of its ways. It seems to fly like a Harrier, have a similar top speed to a Harrier, only difference is this design is a lot more cursed than a Harrier, and also probably a lot more unstable in beat than a Harrier. 
This thing is genuinely difficult to control when you start to get a low speed here. I mean, what can you do when you don't have um, nozzles or RCS or any sort of form of default control other than moving the entire engine pods? You know, when, when you consider that, it kind of makes sense that it's not very stable. That's just about as much ALA as I'm going to want on this thing. Luckily, most of the control at this point is starting to get taken over by the thrust here, so I don't have to worry about it. Still don't want to stall the ones out of this speed. Like that. Ooh, we're good though. It. Awesome, I'm actually pretty proud of that one. That was pretty difficult. There we go. Back to normal. Well, uh, I do hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope to see you all in the next one. Goodbye.